Okay, so Leighton, you're now technical director of one of the largest clubs in the Pacific Wars, Northwest. You've seen countless players go on to play college soccer. You're coaching a club now that has players which are already slated to go and play college soccer. Can you give us uh, a history of your career from high school up to through the pro years to today? Yeah, I need a quick one. <laughs> so I uh, about high school, Federway High School in Washington, and uh, got recruited by you know, a few schools around the nation and so, uh, decided on University of San Diego. Not a bad place to go. Yeah. So, um, I enjoyed my career there four years, graduated, uh, and then went on to MLS um, in San Jose out of college, um, then bounced around the A-League for a couple of years, uh, then went over to Sweden for a couple of years, played on the indoor uh, circuit in the MISL, and then back to MLS, back to the A-League slash USL, um, and then kind of finished my career, started the coaching aspect. So. Bounced around a lot of leagues, PDL, MLS, MISL, you know, all the the U.S. soccer leagues, you know, some Canadian teams in there too. Um, but it was a great experience looking back. Obviously, didn't make a ton of money in terms of, you know, dollar amount, but, you know, made a lot in terms of experiences and um, getting to know people and connections and learning the game, which was fantastic. So um, towards the end of my career, I started coaching while I was playing. So at nights, I mean, you have a free day. So at nights, I'd coach teams. And lucky enough to uh, be at this complex down in Seattle, Starfire Soccer Complex, probably the best in the West Coast. Maybe not, if not that, the, the nation. Fantastic facility. And now I'm uh, the technical director of Pacific Northwest Soccer Club, which is one of the biggest premier clubs in the Seattle area. And it's uh, going very well. Um, and I'm just, I love my job every day. It's fantastic. Help kids from eight all the way to 18, and you get to see kids start and finish in the club, and we've had a ton of kids go on, uh, boys and girls, or young men, young women, into the college programs. And into professional? You were coach for the Seattle Sounders Women's Club here recently? Yeah, I did Seattle Sounders Women for a couple of years. A good experience also. You know, I got to deal with a higher level player that was either in college or out of college, so that was a fantastic experience also. So I am a, a, a soccer player for Pacific Northwest and I want to I want to get to the college level. How, what kind of resources can you provide? What kind of courses can a club provide? Yeah, well, one of the first one obviously is you have to be on the field a lot, you know. We have good coaching here. Um, it's kind of an open door policy in terms of players. They can practice with multiple teams. It's a real players club, so it's it's you're free to get more than what you're just given in terms of with your team. So as a club, we want to create an environment that kids, if they want to train four days a week, they can do that. You know, with games on the weekend and whatever, They're, they can get a lot of touches on the ball. So we offer a lot of different programs to get the kids on the field playing because that's key in order for them to be successful or get a college opportunity. So they have to be with the ball and training. You know, the environment they're in. So we try to provide that. We also have a college coordinator that helps set resumes, um, <clears throat> email coaches, kind of guides them in the direction of what colleges will best suit them. So we have a college coordinator at the club that helps out. And um, Interesting that I, I tried to bring this up to you on, on the aspects of fitness. Are there fitness trainers that are associated with your club? Currently, we, we do not have associated with our club, but at this complex that we're at, the Starfire Complex, we do have the CATS program, which is uh, behind the front desk. That um, is, um, uh, CATS stands for Competitive Athletic Training Zone. So they, um, you know, they were their sponsor here. So they uh, work with a lot of athletes on the individual basis of fitness. So that is the avenue we don't technically provide as a club, but it's right, you know, right in the next door uh, to where we're at. Okay, how about from a technical perspective, how many days of, t of technical training would these players get in a week's, in a week's, day, in a week's time? I mean, would they get or should yes. they get? Uh, would they get, you know, they get the basic, th you know, we're trying to train them three days a week as a team and then they have games and tournaments and whatever, but they're trying to do three days a week of training and they really should do a lot of stuff on their own outside of that. Just like any sport or any piano or whatever maybe, they need to do more. Yeah, we were doing three times a week, and it's important that these kids do more than that. You know, outside of the practice, uh, it's key that they get as much as they can. Because um, at the end of the day, you're going to have to be comfortable on the ball. 
Exactly. We used to, as kids, do it up against a wall. Yeah. Find a wall, train. And in, when the, when we switch into college, uh, obviously it was in a field house, and it was mandatory. Every morning you had technique training. It was responsible for yourself. That's part of your responsibility to the team. Is that if a youth player wants to play at that level, <laughs> what are you advising them on? Uh, on yeah, same thing. I mean, it's, as much as they can be with the ball, the better. As much as they can get. You know, extra training outside of their team environment, the better. You know, that's going to put them one leg above their peers, so to speak, if they're doing extra. And that's what's going to be mandatory when these college coaches look at them. They want to know technically how is that player. Okay.